We're going to use the pressure biofeedback cuff now to evaluate the deep neck flexors and any corresponding increase in the sternocleidomastoid and the anterior scalenes. So neck dysfunction is very common and often goes undernoticed. So we bring Jack to lie on the couch in trying to acquire this neutral neck position, uh, which he's achieved quite easily. Some older people particularly might need more of a raise underneath the head, in which case you would include a little bit more raise underneath the neck as well, correspondingly. Because what we want to do is for this to fill the space now between Jack and the couch. So if I can just slide this underneath your neck, please. So it's going into the hollow of the neck and we're going to make sure that it's nicely positioned so that he's in the middle of it. And then you can just give it a squish to make sure that the air is evenly distributed. Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, they're really handy to have. So do go and rush out and get one, won't you? The, um, I'm going to position it with the needle at 20 millimeters of mercury to begin with. And then I'm going to instruct my client to make a craniocervical flexion, uh, nodding the chin towards the chest, and just notice what happens through onto this, um, onto this dial. So we're starting at the bottom of the red, and I'm going to show it to the client. And what I want you to do incrementally is to move from the bottom of the red, first of all, to the top of the red, and that's two millimeters of mercury in excursion and then move on to the next one, another two millimetres, and again, and then again, and that's, we've moved all in all eight millimetres of mercury, and this is, correlates with about 80% of the range of movement available. And then just relax and release and have a rest for a moment. So what we want to uh, uh, inquire about really is what's happening here in the superior uh, superficial muscles of the neck and particular sternocleidomastoid which has a uh, habit of taking over as you probably know. So in this, uh, in this next test Jack is going to move from the bottom of the red and go in two steps of two millimeters of mercury at a time as I palpate and then I'm going to notice just what's happening as he does this. So when you're ready nod to the top of the red and then the next color, yeah. So you're moving in two millimeters at a time, and again, that's it. And then again, yeah, and then release and relax. So you would expect when they achieve 28 millimeters of mercury that they are probably going to be getting some activity of sternocleidomastoid towards the end of that, uh, of that movement. So we can then teach our clients to begin to distinguish between this undesirable activity in sternocleidomastoid and a more preferred strategy, which would be the deep neck flexors. So nodding the chin towards the chest. To teach this a, as a home exercise, we would obviously, they wouldn't have the cuff at their disposal necessarily. So we can divide the movement into percentages. So all the way would be 100%. And what we're aiming for is a, an excursion which allows the client to achieve a contraction using only the deep neck flexors. So nodding in those two millimeters of mercury, think 20%, then 40%, 60%, and 80% really would be the end. And there I'm definitely feeling it kick in. So back off, back to 60%, that's a bit more into me, there, hold. And then we can introduce training, 10 sets of 10 second holds, for instance, would be a training regime for these deep neck flexors. And these muscles are sorely neglected and, um, and a training regime can be surprisingly beneficial uh, when it comes to pain and dysfunction in the upper quadrant.